Spirit of God, come down. Spirit of God, rain down. Spirit of God, come into my life. Spirit of God, rain down. Let your fire fall on me. Oh, Spirit of God, fall, fall on me, Spirit, fall on me. Oh, let your fire fall on me, oh, Spirit of God, fall, fall on me, Spirit, fall on me. I pray you rain down, down, rain down in my life, Lord, rain down. Lord, rain down, down, rain, O oh, Spirit of God. Okay, friends, hearty welcome to our Bible session. And today also we are going to reflect on the book of Joshua about the important contents or the subject matter dealt with in the book of Joshua, the important theological messages and also the important themes that are present there. Okay, first of all, just to recapitulate what we said yesterday. We mentioned about the promised land, the understanding about the promised land. Then we narrated how the land was conquered and occupied by the people of Israel. And we also explained about the concept of harem, which is something problematic. And we tried to explain that the harem was not the common practice of the time, but it was given rarely, a punishment given rarely. But the important meaning, as we said, is, is that harem signifies a burnt offering to God. That was the usual understanding, we can say. And the word harem means anathema, anathema in Latin. And anathema would mean being set apart and set apart for God. That is the word meaning, anathema. A-N-A-T-H-E-M-A, anathema. And when something is set apart for God. It is meant or devoted for total destruction. It is in this sense that harem was understood and practiced. It was not a scandal for anybody at the time because all the nations practiced the same at that time. And therefore, Israel also was practicing harem once in a while, only at certain occasions or uh, certain points of importance. That is what we can say. And now, with regard to the content of the book, content or structure of the book means when we take the book of Joshua, we find there are 24 chapters narrated, narrated there. And all these 24 chapters have to be seen. What all things are dealt with in each chapter? Of course, that is, uh, that would take a lot of time. But we just, in a, um, what's called, in a very brief wise, we mention about the content of the book of Joshua. 
Joshua chapters 1 to 12. First part. It gives the story of the conquest by Joshua. Joshua and the army of Israel conquer the land of Palestine. Not the big nations as we said earlier, but the small, small nations. And all these nations are conquered without much difficulty, without much bloodshed and so on. This is what we find there. And there we find it is God who is fighting for them. God is the commander. And God gives the order to the people of Israel when to proceed for war, when to stop the war, what all uh, condition are to be observed by them. All these things are taken care of by God himself. Therefore, God is practically, we can say, the military chief of Israel. In that way, we can understand. And the second part, that is chapter 13 to 21, there we find, once the land was conquered, we find, the, once the land is conquered, the land is divided among the tribes. And we know, in order to conquer the land, that is story in chapters 1 to 12. People of Israel should keep up their fidelity and obedience. If they are unfaithful and if they are disobedient, they will not take possession of the land. And that is the lesson conveyed through this. And therefore, we can say, Israelites, occupied or conquered and occupied the land and the people were obedient to Yahweh. And whenever they failed to obey or when they disobeyed, they were defeated by enemies. We find such a story narrated in the book of Joshua. As Joshua was advancing, after conquering Jericho to capture the small country called Ai, A I I. And the spies who were sent out came back with the reply or with the uh, counsel that only about 2,000 soldiers will be enough to conquer Ai. And Joshua, hearing this advice, he sent 3,000 people. But what happens? Even though 3,000 were sent and the army of Ai was not very strong, Israel was defeated. And that was a matter of shame for Israel. And they began to murmur before Yahweh and before Moses. Why are we brought into this land of foreigners that we may be struck down and be killed? And Moses also, sorry, Joshua also raised the same problem to Yahweh. If the people are killed in the wars, then Others would say that Yahweh has not kept up his word and the people are practically killed by the enemies and Yahweh is unable to overcome or to defeat the enemies. And now Yahweh intervenes and he informed Joshua, Israel committed sin. And that is why they were defeated. And then we see they cast lots. And finally, they identify a man called Akhan. And what happens? He was asked, what did he do? And then he narrated the story. He found a small piece of silver. 
that was kept uh, tied to the dress of the one who was killed by him and he took it for himself and also a woolen mantle and even though he what he took was little but as a result of his action Israel lost the war and now they are to be punished. Akan, all his family members with all their possessions were stoned to death and then they were burned as a sacrifice. And this story gives the insight that unless they obey Yahweh's command faithfully, they will not succeed even in war. And this is the lesson of the story. Okay, and now let us come back to the story itself. And Yahweh has already uh, kept up his promises and gave uh, victory over Jericho. But here they were defeated. And once the cause of sin was averted or taken away, then they could easily defeat the, uh, the town or the kingdom I. And then they went on to conquer the cities of Philistines and also other small towns or small kingdoms. That is the story that we find here. And then after this conquest, as we said, the second part, 13 to 21, it is the division of the conquered land among the 12 tribes. And that was asked by Moses. Once he conquered the land, the land is to be distributed among the tribes. But he made one condition. No land is to be given for the Levites. They are to live by the temple or by the gifts or donations of the people. And okay, how to understand this? The land was divided, and now the, the occupied land was to be allotted to the members of the tribe according to the strength of the people. Therefore, Benjamin was a small tribe, whereas Judah and Joseph, Manasseh, they were big tribes. And more land was uh, given to the bigger tribes, whereas um, a small extent of land was given to small tribes. And in each tribe, the land was divided among the important clans and then according to the families, so that each family received a portion of the land. And what is the speciality of this land? They called it as the divine heritage or heritage in God. And this heritage in God would mean a share in the patrimony that is the, um, the um, heritage of the father in that sense. Okay, therefore, we can say they were ready to accept this condition and uh, they were ready to um, accept the land with all joy. And now all the people of Israel received a piece of land. Of course, we know the land once given to them becomes a possession for them. And the ownership of the land was very determinative because that gave them the power and also the credit belonging to a citizen of Israel or God's nation. Therefore, land was very important for them. And Moses also gave the law that this land is not to be uh, appropriated by others. It can happen that the poor people, when they are deprived of the necessary grains or money, then they may pledge the land. But according to the laws regarding the Jubilee, 
the land is the land is to be returned in the jubilee year to the person who had pledged the land even if he did not pay back the money because the land was the precious possession for them and not only that they when they uh, pledge their dress their shoes it has to be given back by the end of the day because if the dress taken in pledge is not given back in the cold of the night the poor one may suffer and may even die of cold that should not happen therefore even if the money is not given back the pledged material should be given back to the owner that was the usual uh, concept that prevail in the country and here we see the division of the land among the tribes and when the land was divided there is a problem here if we read closely we see that all the tribes were given the land by casting lot and we know it was almost like uh, 400 into 150 square kilometers of land let us say within the area of palestine and the people are already settled in many of these places and now when they are given the lot and through the lot they are given a plot of land then all the people who are settled in one place now have to shift to another place and practically that is very difficult because they have already uh, made their homes here and now to go from one place to another place totally routing up uh, routing up from one place to uh, go to another place it was really difficult we know then how to understand the casting of the lot the commentators would say like this the lot was cast and we know the people settled in the land of palestine practically according to the tribe that is okay we are familiar with the concept of people migrating for the sake of making a living for themselves in many of the states we find this phenomenon the farmers they go and settle down in another area where there is cheaper farm land available and when they go there they usually go in a group a group of people going from the same area and settling down in another area together or the relations they go together to one place and settle down there and why do they do that it is for the safety and also for that sense of belongingness and this is what we can say here and here we see that when they were ready for this to settle down in the land of uh, the conquered land we can see they might have settled in a place according to the tribe that is the people of benjamin would be staying together in one place people of juda in another place people of ruben or joseph or manasseh still in other places and when they settled down in their own land and then when the lot was cast we can see that the land that was already occupied by the tribe was allotted to them by the lot itself this might have happened according to the commentators therefore then there will be no problem of shifting the houses and that was impossible and this is what we are to understand by casting lot joshua divided the land and when he divided the land there is one more thing we are to understand the tribe of levi the levites they were not given the land and why 
Moses said they are to live by the temple and the priests are to be supported by the people and they are to give a tithe, one tenth of all their possessions for the maintenance of the priests. The priests are to be worried about the ministry in the temple and things associated with the, the cult and they are not to be engaged in cultivation and things like that. And therefore, they were not given the land. But at the same time, they were given cities to live because they need place to live. And in all the tribes, we find cities were allotted for Levites to live in, but not the land for cultivation. That is what we are to understand. Okay, therefore, this is the special situation that we find in the second area. And now in chapters uh, 22 to 24, we find the third section, the farewell discourse of Joshua. That is, Joshua gives out his final words. And in his final discourse, we will find he would ask the people of Israel, be faithful to the commands and laws of Yahweh. Then only you will be able to retain the land. Otherwise, you will fail in your land or you will lose your land. Therefore, take care to abide by the laws of Yahweh. That was the advice given by Joshua in the last three chapters. This is the content of the book, we can say. And now, the important themes in the book of Joshua. And we here we see one of the first themes, Joshua and Moses, they are presented as parallels. Joshua and Moses are presented as parallels. That is, the author of the book of Joshua is trying to show that Joshua is almost like Moses. And how he has done it? He has employed a couple of means for the same. And they are uh, three, four um, points are to be remembered here. One, Joshua is presented as a parallel to Moses. And Joshua does almost anything and everything that Moses did. That is the reason why we say Joshua is presented as parallel to Moses. And for example, spreading out the hands and praying, interceding for the people, dividing the waters. Moses divided the waters of the Red Sea and Joshua divided the waters of the river Jordan. And then we will also find sending the spies before conquering the land. Moses sent spies to the promised land and Joshua sent spies to Jericho, we see. And they observed the Passover feast, both of them. And also they made the covenant or renewed the covenant. For these kinds of things were done by Moses and it was imitated by Joshua. And therefore, Joshua is presented as a parallel to Moses. That is one point. And secondly, we can say Joshua is presented as fulfilling the commandments or the commands given by Moses. And Moses had given a couple of instructions to be followed by Joshua and the people of Israel. And we can say one of such uh, commands is harem. We explained already what is meant by harem. And then another one would be the division of the land by casting lot. That also was accomplished by him. Then the cities of Levites, we already mentioned about it. Then the cities of Asylum. Okay, what is meant by cities of Asylum? 
to the there is a word called the asylum seekers. When somebody asks for refuge in another country as an uh, as a refugee, he is called um, or he um, his position is that of the asylum seeker. That is one who one who asks for refuge in another nation, and it is a political refuge he is asking for, and therefore uh, here the asylum or cities of asylum is something different here it means or refers to a person who happens to commit a crime but unknowingly just take this example life for life is the law in israel and if somebody happens to kill someone they will be killed and just to take this example i seeing a couple of mangoes in a mango tree through a stone in order to get two or three mangoes but unfortunately the stone that i threw did not hit the mango but it went farther and came down on the head of a passenger that is walking by the road and beyond the fence of my land let us say unfortunately he happened to die and now what is to be done according to the law anyone who has seen me throwing the stone and another one being killed can stone me to death or he can assemble together others and kill me that is the usual way it is understood and when they are uh, when they are going to kill me like that practically i have not committed a crime voluntarily here the death occurred without my intention and knowledge and in that case what is to be done i can run and escape from the place and take refuge in a house of asylum or the city of asylum and once i take refuge in the city of asylum then it will be clear that nobody can lay hand on me but on the other hand i can stand for the trial and then explain what happened and so on thus i can save my life and these places are called the cities of asylum that is what we find here and then there is something the a third uh, point to remember is that joshua is presented almost like a carbon copy of moses that is whatever he did or whatever he said was repeated by joshua also like a carbon copy the original and the copy would look alike we know and the fourth point we see that joshua also enjoyed the presence of god in his life or the closeness of the lord we find in the book of joshua there are five instances where god says to joshua i will be with you just as i was with moses and therefore we can see joshua is guaranteed the presence and thereby the protection of yahweh in his life just as moses was protected by god joshua also will be protected and this is the meaning of saying i will be with you and this uh, phrase or this um, assurance will be repeated again and again by uh, yahweh and another important point the first we said about the parallel uh, features or the uh, joshua is parallel to moses and now we can say joshua's uh, prominence is another important factor and the prominence of joshua 
is to be understood like this. Only in the book of Joshua, he is praised like this. But in other books, it is not so. And therefore, the prominence is not universal. Here, we see it is a law, much importance is given to Joshua. And there is one more point that we have to mention about it. And that is called the use of etiology. E-T-I-O-L-O-G-Y. Etiology. Etiology means to explain the meaning, how or the origin of a name or a place. We find, for example, in the New Testament, the word Akkal Dhamma. Thank you, Jesus, for your love that you have revealed to us and for the love that we share together as your body. Grant us the grace to be alert to your promptings and live in endless love. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank <music> you.